Hello again, everyone. Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be dissertating and talking about having the part of fortune posited in the 12th house in a natal chart. Now, as many of you may know, uh, when I look at the part of fortune, it's about uh, cultivation and growth. It may indicate some possible difficulties that the person had in connection with the 12th house, perhaps early on in life. And as the person progresses into adulthood, things uh, can be very, maybe more fortuitous in that house uh, at that point in time. Early on, maybe this person may have had difficulties, perhaps with self-sacrifice, maybe with uh, hidden enemies or adversaries. Maybe there was some difficulty in connection with restrictions or limitations. Maybe they were self-imposed, maybe to some degree. Uh, look at this uh, also maybe this person didn't real might have had problems maybe in connection with seclusion and solitude maybe he or she didn't get enough private time maybe there was too much of an emphasis on it now later in life as the person hits adulthood these areas in life could very well be again more fortuitous might be more beneficial and advantageous to the person perhaps there's some gain or some benefit in connection with self-sacrifice, with philanthropy, with being charitable, with uh, maybe helping others in connection uh, with, with maybe the underprivileged people that are less fortunate than us, such as the oppressed, the impoverished, and the homeless. Maybe there's triumph over uh, hidden enemies or adversaries. Uh, there can be um, there can be very uh, more positive things in connection with the 12th house in general. Maybe this person might benefit maybe through maybe work they might do in seclusion or solitude. It could be well, it's, uh, it could be something maybe with the metaphysical could be an example perhaps through spirituality can be uh, another way. Now a lot of this can depend on the sign that the part of fortune is in in the 12th house now let's say that the part of fortune is in the zodiac sign leo well leo is known to be very uh, magnanimous and it could indicate really maybe a lot of generosity in in their private matters in their private life being magnanimous in this way maybe this person does some some kind of studying to do something connected uh with you know like a leo like a profession maybe or something with drama maybe studying to be an entertainer this might maybe this is done perhaps in, in privacy or maybe this person uh, might work do something where they they work and in, in film but behind the scenes such as special effects could be another example if scorpio is the sign of the part of fortune in the 12th house perhaps something uh, connected with astrology, uh, the occult, the supernatural, and privacy and seclusion. This could also be somebody that might put a lot of emotional intensity into matters uh, connected with the 12th house, whether it be charity or self-sacrifice. And in, in trying to combat their, I guess you could say their secret, their hidden enemies or adversaries, perhaps in trying to bring them out. Uh, now, Another thing uh, to look at um, is when we look at the, the 12th house, uh, another, another example I want to give, let's say we take the sign um, Aquarius in the 12th house. This could even uh, show a lot of humanitarianism in, in their private matters, and maybe this person benefits from that. Maybe there's something fortuitous in connection with that, maybe uh, something or maybe they study some kind of uh, computers or electronics uh, studying in privacy, maybe esoteric uh, subjects, it can be aeronautics, something with the, with the 12th house, a lot of this um, is about, I, I believe the self-sacrifice is very strong and it can indicate that the person can maybe strongly, immensely uh, benefit uh, perhaps from this. Now, Let's see if I could give maybe one more example as far as maybe the part of fortune in the 12th house by a sign. Let's say we take the sign Gemini. 
and in this particular case this could be somebody that maybe could benefit maybe from being a ghost writer or doing something that's that involves a lot of communication uh, in, in privacy. This could be going on the internet, for example, and doing a lot of networking in their alone time, so to speak, and in solitude and in uh, seclusion. It could be somebody through, by, by means of communication, maybe helps others that are in like a, a less fortunate situation than the average person, such as the impoverished, the homeless, and the hungry and this could be somebody that finds real happiness and in, in, in really being uh, in really just being very elated and ecstatic and, and perhaps in, in, in finding maybe ways in, to, to do things uh, for other people and not in really in, in strongly uh, maybe avoiding things connected with self-aggrandizement or egocentric things and doing something uh, for others where they feel they get uh, that, that positive, that feeling of elation and happiness. Well, anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for having the part of fortune in the 12th house in the natal chart. And I know you're probably wondering what I'm going to be doing next because that concludes the part of fortune in the houses series. Well, people, I'm going to start a series of sun and rising sign combinations, and I'm going to go in chronological order. I'm going to do the ones with the Aries Sun first. The first installment will be Aries Sun in Aries Rising. Then the second would be Aries Sun, Taurus Rising. Aries Sun, Gemini Rising would be the third and so on and so forth. And then when I'm done with the ones with the Aries Sun, then I'll start with the Taurus Sun and then followed by uh, the Rising Sun. So anyway, people. That'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for having the part of fortune in the 12th house in the natal chart. And stay tuned next time, as I stated before, uh, when I start the beginning of my uh, sun sign, rising sign combination series. And that would be Aries sun and Aries ascendant. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel, but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone. Because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in your natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.